Good morning, my name is Vicky Schaefer. Thank you for the opportunity to attend and present at this year's Citizen Science Oz 21 virtual conference. Um, welcome to our presentation uh, on tourist scientists. I'd also like to commence by acknowledging the traditional custodians, the Gubby Gubby people. I recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. So what are the benefits of citizen science? What are the opportunities here? Researching wildlife in terrestrial and marine environments can be quite challenging. Marine environments have a whole nother level of complexity associated with the timing of being able to collect data, such as seasonality um, around migratory species or weather patterns. It's labour intensive. You can be in remote locations. Um, the changing weather, nice in the morning, more challenging in the afternoon, and the changing species behaviours uh, can really make this quite complex. By engaging locals and potentially visitors to regions, there is an opportunity there to have cost, time and labour efficiencies that would allow for broader scale investigation. If you'd like to use the QR code, it'll take you to a short two question um, survey in forms. And I'm going to use that information that's shared there in the Q&A session associated with this presentation. So feel free to go in and give your uh, comments to the two questions that are there. When we think about some of the benefits, we think about scientific discovery, opportunities to make a difference, connection to place, the building of social capital. What other ones can you think of? When we're thinking about designing our citizen science projects, we've got to consider the participant experience. This is the understudied component of citizen science um, research. We need to understand more about the motivation of people what commitment levels they have, and what does that commitment mean? What skills, knowledge, abilities do they bring to the project? What are their expectations? And what are the expected outcomes or um, the outcomes that we might not expect that could come from having this broad participation of people within our projects? So a considered approach can reveal these opportunities to increase participants and participation. And one example of that is tourist scientists. This comes under the inclusivity and diversity. So diverse participation and inclusivity are not automatic. We've got a plan for that as well. Traditionally, the production of scientific knowledge is criticised as being a non-inclusive process. Understanding the target market Drawing on different participant groups helps inform existing levels of diversity, identify potential gaps, and, uh, and identify ways to increase that inclusivity. Travellers are seeking more immersive experiences. When we travel, we want the opportunity to have some purpose to our travel, to learn something new, whether that's about the place, a species, or ourselves, or our family units. Citizen science can present the opportunity to facilitate that. Diversity in participants and participation can link very effectively to our intended outcomes and reveal outcomes we hadn't yet expected. Tourists are those traveling outside their usual place of um, residence or the usual environments for serendipitous or um, intentional okay, participation in collaborative research. And this can generate new knowledge and understanding. So tourists can be engaged in meaningful activities that complement the sorts of things that they're doing whilst they're on holidays. Tourist scientists may undertake single, multiple, intentional or serendipitous activity. And that's what we also need to consider. That one-off participation may include projects where equipment is supplied, such as binoculars for a species count. Family and youth can collect data within Cleanup projects. Um, you might have, uh, have the opportunity to be in a cleanup project at a beach where you can collect, weigh, and record the plastic debris um, distribution and abundance in the area of focus. This then can be on shared with other larger citizen science based uh, collect, uh, data collection um, programs. They can be a ranger for a day 
and, and collect data as part of that process as well. Conversely, those visiting for several days or weeks may seek progressive participation in unsupervised or semi-supervised activities. This may include tick and flick surveys, um, online apps, um, mini training programs that inspire, build confidence, as well as knowledge and skills. Research suggests that a well-aligned learning plan with well-articulated learning goals uh, should measure learning as an outcome. Now, learning in a citizen science, tourist science uh, project could be different. So we've got to look at it from the perspective of who the participant is. That one-off and intermittent volunteering, that actually may not be as attractive if it's got an intense training project that, uh, program that's going to take up much of the person's day and not let them get down to the collection of the data, the fun part. So we've got to think about fun learning games that could be associated with it. Um, are there rewards associated with participation. That could be discount to local tourist activities. Um, it could be certificates. It doesn't have to be big and it doesn't have to be expensive. It's just recognising the contribution that people are making. Guidance and participant monitoring are required to ensure that the data that's collected is viable and uh, useful as part of your project and fits with the aims and the goals of the project. Uh, making sure that accuracy uh, of observa observations, et cetera, is um, relevant as well. But offering guidance also allows for people to ask questions, to be engaged, to increase their knowledge and confidence, as we mentioned. That might be face-to-face. -face, it might be digital. Okay? So we've got a, a plan for this type of activity, as it's been mentioned. There's also an opportunity to engage with commercial operators. Maybe the training and the education or the learning component can be aligned with the interpretive materials um, and the presentations that the operators are actually giving their tourist, um, the tourists and their visitors. Emily and I devised this uh, framework to look at the engagement of tourist scientists within citizen science. So an example would be some citizen surveillance. This looks at uh, the type of activity conducted by volunteers, whether they're recruited or it's serendipitous, that results in the monitoring or surveillance uh, type data collection. Uh, in, on Barrow Island in Australia, Thomas and his team uh, and their team uh, identified 95% of new indigenous, uh, indigenous vertebrate species were found using surveillance activities that was actually conducted by the public. Uh, and mem uh, community members. So there's a real opportunity here. Tourist scientists visiting marine protected areas could monitor and surveil anchoring, uh, mooring, diving, snorkeling, a whole plethora of different activities to record different species sightings or behaviours or changes in um, the marine environment, such as coral. Another form is crowdsourcing. This is the outsourcing of tasks by open recruitment to elicit contribu uh, contributions from large undefined networks of people. So crowdsourcing can expedite the collection of large data sets and it's a contributory type um, project. Zooniverse would be an example of that, but tourists could be engaged in different um, destinations and then upload their data, whether that be photographs, um, whatever is required by the project, to, to then further, as I said, that, that project um, data collection. Crowdsourcing permits diverse participation. There's a sense of transparency and reliability to capitalise on that wisdom of the crowd. Platforms of opportunity support crowdsourcing. There's so many different softwares, as we know, and applications and smartphones now do amazing things that help us collect our data and tourists are literally carrying these devices around with them to record their experiences. So it's a natural progression for them to also collect data. Crowd content is another uh, that also utilises the crowd. Examples of those where citizen science can take photos, as we've mentioned, and upload them. So Coast Snap and Coast Snap Queensland. 
uh, are opportunities for tourists to be able to take photos of focal beaches and upload that data to social media. It is, it is, as we mentioned, it's a key activity of tourists. Utilising photos and utilising social media is something that they're engaging with already. Let's see how we can incorporate that into projects to achieve the sorts of outcomes that our researchers are seeking. There's a real value to this well beyond the collection of data. I often think that is the case for all citizen science projects. Um, the benefits are well beyond uh, the aims of uh, the initial research project. They can be economic, social and environmental benefits associated with engaging tourist scientists. Um, it can create a competitive advantage for a destination as well. Recognising participant efforts as uh, within that well-designed project can create immersion, immersive experiences, memorable experiences, and even transformative experiences for those that are engaging in the project. That immersion is about absorption in being involved in, in an activity. Um, when we link that with things like ecotourism, eco-immersion can evolve, and that, that uh, um, is a deeper level of learning and opportunity for visitors to a, re uh, to a particular region. It can have profound mental involvement rather than superficial um, interaction as well, if that's what's appropriate for the target market and your particular project as well. Um, so think about those broader benefits. Um, they could address local concerns or broader problems. They inform decision-making. They um, can, uh, can inform, sorry, regulatory and policy development and link to conservation initiatives as well. To gain maximum benefits, projects should be structured to include the tourist scientist. The recruitment, the engagement, the retention, pre, during, in post is quite important. Choosing suitable approaches, identifying the potential benefits that the participant is seeking as well, the support mechanism, mechanisms that are required, and the overall value um, of participation um, is, is really key. Informing tourist scientists um, of the value of their contribution. And this highlights the economic opportunities and incentives mentioned earlier. Programs can complement social environmental uh, activities that the tourist scientist seeks to participate in. So that's, um, I managed to get that onto the 15 minutes, which was quite a challenge. Um, it's a topic we're quite passionate about. So uh, I had to take quite a few takes to get it within the time frame. So I hope I've given you enough as a taster um, to start really thinking about this diversity inclusivity of citizen science from the perspective of incorporating tourists and tourism within your projects. Um, I like to acknowledge Emily's contribution. She's a fantastic um, emerging researcher um, and doing great work. So I look forward to the Q&A session uh, for this presentation and to participating in the rest of um, the virtual conference. Thank you so much and all the very best to you.